inflation has hit 9.1% from the previous amount, which was uh, 8.6% in May, with market forecasts of 8.8%. So this is a little bit higher. It was expected to increase, but it's still higher than uh, expected. So if we actually break it down, there are a few components that are the most a material that has factored in of why we have 9.1% inflation. Some of these you may not actually feel like yourself because this, remember, this is happening across the entire country. So let's talk about some of the major things that have been the biggest impact, right? Food inflation across the board. Are you feeling at the grocery store paying a lot more money? F food inflation is at 10.4% versus the previous year. Services isn't too bad i mean it's high but it's all relative it's not too bad i don't think people are experiencing this too much but it is higher at 6.22 percent rent inflation i would i would ask about this on your end are you experiencing only that from a year over year perspective for my opinion it's typically a lot higher it's probably over 10 percent at least here in the bay area so that's something very uh, important to realize and understand when it comes to rent side of things this is actually much lower because this is from a entire country level. Now, energy inflation, we certainly have felt it across the board. You may argue it's probably even a whole lot more than this, but 41.62%. Uh, this is very staggering, right? And unless, and unless there are a lot more supply coming or the demand is able to drop, which de demand may naturally just drop as all these other things get more expensive, uh, then we're not going to see any, this change anytime soon. But in my opinion, it's most likely going to have to be a supply side increase. Now, I know uh, Biden recently this week went to the Saudis to try to do make a deal. I'm not too hopeful of that. It's not like all of a sudden they can just increase supply just because they wanted to. If so, they would have done it already, to be fair, right? Like, why wouldn't they print more money when they can, when they have so much, uh, when, when prices are what they are? I don't think it's that simple. And so we're it's going to be like this for a while. I think the only real catalyst that can change is if all of a sudden the war stops. But outside of that, it's going to be hard to see this change too drastically in the near future. And natural gas will likely get more expensive as we enter in the winter season. That's really what's going to be testing to see how, uh, how things progress. But this is a very big problem. It's not easy to solve. If you look at the demand side, the demand side is absolutely very, extremely strong. You have, what's interesting is you have all these commotions about recession, 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 but, and then you look at consumer confidence levels, which is lower, but that's on one end. At the same time, people are traveling like crazy. I mean, if you look at like, there was a report recently of Heathrow airport, they're capping how many passengers can come in a day at a hundred thousand because they are way over capacity way over capacity too many people want to travel and that's happening across the board people want to travel everywhere look at airline prices airline prices are a component of obviously uh energy but it's also of demand and people i know for a fact have had this pent up um appetite to travel everywhere around the world especially as the world has opened up than before so what's what's really interesting is on one end you have the consumer confidence level and you have all these you know, looming recession and things like that. But people are not spending accordingly, nor do they care because, because the consumer levels are still very high in terms of how much they have and what they're willing to do. So it's a really interesting dichotomy because if the demand is so that high, then these things won't get affected, won't change. And um, and of course, time will tell, but that's, that's, that's not going to help these factors where energy prices are what they are and supply is more constrained. Those are the main things to bring up. And so what's interesting about this, though, that I want to also share is if you look at this, you would say, wow, this is like terrible news, right? You look at, oh, wow, it's it's another increase, 9.1%. Well, what's really fascinating is uh, the stock market wise just shrugged it off, right? I mean, if you look at the last couple of days, they just shrugged it off. Nothing happened. When they reported on, I think it was on the 14th, it actually was a bull market. So really interesting, you know, thing to see, you know, on one end, it seemed like this was a really bad report, but from the general market, as general markets are forward looking, they, they kind of just shrugged it off and like, this is no big deal. This is, we're, this is just a time that we're in. We've already factored in 
we're going to be in a high inflation environment for some time. Fascinating, right? Very fascinating. Thank you for watching this short on my YouTube channel. For more shorts, go ahead and click here. For more live streams, you can go ahead and click here. I'll see you in the next one.